Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jesse the Plants. We love bringing you new videos every week. And I know you enjoy watching them. So like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell so you will know when new content is posted. Like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Now sit back and watch this. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jesse Duplantis. And I'm Kathy Duplantis. Thank you for tuning in to our boardroom chat today. And I yes. think we're going to have a good conversation. Oh, yeah. We always do. Do we? <laughs> Praise the Lord. What a blessing. And, you know, we got a lot of people that watch us from all over the world. Got well, you want to read that first? You can. Yeah, that'd be a great Before thing. I get into this. Yeah. Uh, this is, says, uh, Daniel says, watching from New Zealand. We got to go back to New Zealand. You remember that time I walked over there? The uh, Maori Indians, they honored me with that uh, the top of cloth. That, that, that top of cloth. Yeah. yeah, we have it hanging in the office. Oh, it's wonderful. It's, 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 it's a blessing of the Lord. What a great blessing. Anyway, uh, Patricia says, hello to you, Kathy and Jesse. I love watching your videos, and I'm watching one right now where you're talking about Jesus' resurrection. Praise God. Thank you for this message as I am watching it on Good Friday. Thank you, and have a very happy Holy Easter from Woodbridge, Queensland, Australia. Yeah, we've just come through. Easter Sunday was a oh, powerful man. holy oh. week. But like we say, we live a holy, holy life. life. Amen. So good. Amen. Yeah, I like so that better Australia. than holy week. And then Sarah says, on the morning of March the 23rd, 2024, I accepted the Lord as my Praise Savior. God. I was once lukewarm, but I am radically saved by grace. Hallelujah. I love that testimony. And Nicola says, Sunday I was baptized in my back garden, surrounded by much love, your ministry and faithful teaching showed me the finished work of Jesus in real life. I am beyond grateful. Much love from Oxford, United Kingdom. Oh, we need to go back to the United Kingdom. I, I sure enjoy those wonderful people. Oh, yeah. The blessings of the Lord. Really great. You want me to read some more? Sure. Holly says, JDM, I received your magazine in the mail recently. What a blessing. I just had to stand there hugging your gift of the magazine with great love and thankfulness. Yeah, we give Thank that you. as a gift away, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. You know, and between the posters and everything, it costs quite a bit of uh, money to, to do that. And, Not you know, just that, the whole team that plans it, organizes it, gets oh, yeah. it all together. We have but, to be a Yeah, a lot of money. I mm -hmm. mean, and you know, the thing that's amazing to me is, uh, you know, people say, why don't you, why, you don't need to do that because you can get the magazine digitally. Yeah, and if you want it digital, you can get it automatically. But, you know, I tell people, me and Kathy, she likes an iPad, and I like the book. If I'm reading a book, you know, and if she said, but there's so much more information in the iPad, and that's true. But uh, I don't know, I just kind of like that. So I'm glad that she is holding that paper magazine. We're going to do it forever. <laughs> that's right, and it, but it is available <laughs> digitally, of course. Yes. People love that, interactive, oh, yeah. which means, like, you can click on something that's a video, and you can actually watch an ad or some spots that we put in the magazine on the digital version, and it's also in Spanish, and it's really being a blessing. Uh, Espanol. Yes. <laughs> and then uh, Tay says, amen. Thank you, Jesus. March brought me into debt freedom. Hallelujah. Glory we to God. We rejoice. With Romans you, came Tay. to pass. <laughs> oh, yeah. no man anything but the and love. And then Donna says, I can testify the Mary Hart videos impacted my life profoundly when I needed to laugh again. Change came, joy came. I'll never let go of it again. You know what I like about them, uh, Mary Hart, do it good, like a medicine videos? Yeah. I, I, I go back in time. When you see the first one, I got kind of like brownish gray. Uh, I mean, so many different uh, how I look, you <laughs> You're know. You're looking at how you look. Everybody's yeah. listening to the stories. <laughs> yeah. All of those were great stories. I mean, I think you have eight of them. Yeah. And we put it on our, on our, tel on our uh, telephone. At the office, it's like the on hold. People go to listen to that sometimes. Sometimes I think you'll go on hold. You'll listen to me reading scriptures from yeah. Healing Word, or, and then they hear some yeah. messages from you. And sometimes they'll it's all a get funny back parts. on the phone and they say, "Put me back on hold. I want to hear that fin the rest <laughs> of that message." Yeah, it's it's we picked out the funny funny illustrations from past all messages. All the different and that true stories, yeah. and and tried to keep it with the spiritual point that was with it. Right. But it always is uplifting and encouraging and I love the fact that people are still being Yeah, that's a blessing right of after God. all these years. Uh, and then uh, this one's from Deborah said says I love you all y'all so much and Jesus loves you. You complement each other as one team. And that a blessing? And uh, says your threefold cord is not easily broken. Praise God. You're such a gift to the body of Christ. That must have been when they saw me, you, and Chrissy together, all three of us, or maybe me, you, and yeah. Jody. Yeah. But uh, anyway, we're a team. Oh, yeah, we flow well. Y'all yeah. uh, know Chrissy. She's on Glorious with Kathy. And 
flows very well. It's a blessing. It's glorious living. Yeah, Pat says, yes, I agree. Jesse needs to do more political topics <laughs> to help understand the stuff that goes on. I should, God bless I shouldn't have read that because my director's back there in the control room here. No, I think it's a good it. thing. So you, you think I should become political? Well, you are political. Am I political? Yeah, I mean, we bring it out from time to time on the chat. Yeah. You'll bring it out in your messages. Well, to me, but it's about really just commenting on what's going, what's yeah, going on I, in the world. I don't really think of it as politics. I just tell people what I think. Or what I, you know, what I believe, you know, and I guess if you want to call it political, well, you can, everybody you know. has an opinion, of course. Are you ready to get into what we're going to talk about? That? Before we Let's do that, do it. Uh, Jennifer, cut that air conditioning down a little bit. I mean, I got I mean, y'all frosting my legs here. It is cold in this TV studio, but Kathy, she gets warm when she gets around. You see, so we had to had to cool the place down. <laughs> she said, "I'm a legend I had in my a own jacket mind." On. Am I really a legend in my own mind? Yes, you are. <laughs> Hallelujah. He that does not tooteth his horn, it will not get tooteth. So you got to learn how to do those things. Praise God. You ready for this? I I'm going to talk about I'm a subject be. that nobody likes. Okay. I don't like it neither, but it's scriptural. I want to go to the book of Psalms, chapter 46, and I want to read a few verses. And boy, if it don't sound like today going on, because the world's going to hell in a handbasket. I, I, I almost hate to turn the television on now. It's, it's going to be political, I guess you could say. All the different, I find that the uh, media's fighting each other. You got CNN who don't like Fox. You got Fox who don't like CNN. And all of them don't like MSNBC and all these kind of crazy people mad about this and stuff. And I mean, just craziness. But look what Psalms chapter 46. I want to read verse 1. It says, God is our refuge and strength and a very present help in trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, the world's in trouble. Just heard recently they had a terrible earthquake in Taiwan, you know, and uh, uh, 7.4 on the Richter scale or something like that. And, uh, you know, they're trying to dig people out. I mean, these things, and God said in the last days you would see these things. But he said God is our refuge. Now I want to read verse 2. Therefore we will not, therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled. Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. Watch this, verse 5. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that's right, and that right early. Now that means, let's see what that means. That means when, when the morning approaches. At the, the dawn of the morning. Boy, this is happening right now. The heathen rage. The kingdoms will move. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. I'm going to read this whole psalm. Good. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Uh, the word Selah means think about it. Yeah. Perhaps. Come and behold the works of the Lord, which desolation he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in asunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Now verse 10 is what I want to get to, which nobody mm. likes. Ready? Be still mm. and know. That I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Be still and know that I am God. Actually, that means that God knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. But it's very hard to be still. But isn't it hard for a child? Now sit right down there and don't move. Oh, Lord. That's almost like going to hell for a kid. You know, because they, they, they want to move all the time and do different things of that nature. Right, right. And you know, when you want to do something yourself and, and somebody's dragging, you know, come on. Now, sometimes Kathy's a little late. Come on, Kathy. I, I want to go. Then sometimes she, I'm a little late or something. She'll say, come on, Jesse. I got to go get this thing done. And, uh, but, it's, but it's really wonderful to learn to be still and know, not believe, that he is God. Mm-hmm. So people ask me all the time, why aren't you affected? by what's going on in the world. I use the scripture, occupy till I come. Well, in my occupation of occupying, if that's such a way of saying that in a sentence, I just still and know that I am God. Like this ministry, for example, it takes millions of dollars a month. I wish it was a million. I remember when it was a million, but it's not no more because it's growing. Millions of dollars a month. And I wish these things were free, but they're not free. You know, because we live in an economic world, which is okay. People say, how do you do that? I, 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 my father used to tell me, you know, he's in heaven now. Son, I, 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 I couldn't do it, man. I, I, I'd be so stressed out. I couldn't hardly get up in the morning. 
And I wanted to tell him this, but I didn't say that, you know, because I want to honor him. I said, I wanted to say, well, that's why God didn't call you to do it, Daddy. You know, fear tolerated is faith contaminated. And the reason why, well, I, I'm not saying that I'm so full of faith. I, I don't, I don't um, worry about that because worry and faith don't mix good. And worry and hurry definitely don't mix. I'm just still and know that he is God, that he is going to do what he says. Mm. For example, when something tries to attack my body or attack your body, I don't deny that because the Bible said by his stripes you were healed. But a lot of people say, yeah, but I am sick. I'm not dealing with that. I'm dealing with your answer instead of your problem. I'm not denying that problem by no means. Right. I just get still mm. and know that I am God, that he is God. I'm not talking about Jesse being God. I'm talking about God being God. Mm -hmm. But when he says what he says, and you know, Psalms 89, 34, one of my, one of my, I love, love that scripture. Got it all over the covenant church. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that goes out of my lips. Boy, once you get God to say something, it's going to come to pass. Now, he is never early. I sure wish he was. But he's never late. He's always on time. You see what I'm saying? So I just haven't done all this time. When he tells me to do a big project, like we got a $20 million project looking at me in the face. 20 million bucks. Now, I do everything debt free. I do it cash. You see, I trust my partners. My partners trust me. We both trust God. And, and I got to believe for that money to come in. I'm not, I'm not taking a dime out of it, not a nickel of it. In any way, shape, but that 20 million, I, I mean, when it comes in, it, it's already spent for the things that God wants. But you say, how can you? I mean, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm just still hmm. because I know his voice. And when you know in whom you have believed, you're persuaded that he's able to keep what you give him, what you commit to him against that day. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I never look at my finance and go, oh, God, I don't know what I'm going to do. This and that. Because, you see, his word is true. He said he supplies all. That's another little word. A-L-L. But, boy, that encompasses a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. All our need. You've heard me say it before. And Kathy used to say, you never ask God for a need. And you've heard me say this hundreds of times, I guess. I don't, I, why would I do that? Such a waste of spiritual energy to ask God for a need when he said he would supply all. Yeah, but you hadn't got it yet. Ah, but be still. Be still. And know that I am God. See, you, you got to connect these things because he said he's going to do it and he's going to do it. Now, who don't want it yesterday? Everybody wants it yesterday. Be still and know that I am God. You see, when you go on a diet and you don't think you're losing weight, but you're not eating much, you're losing weight. But it ain't fast enough. Or if you drink a glass of water and you happen to get on that crazy scale and you get a little what they call, what they call a fluid weight, you go, no, you see that it ain't working. But that body is eating up that fat. It, it's trying not to because it wants to store it so just in case something bad happens. But when you understand God's word, be still and know that I, am, that I can do what I say and I will do what I say. And I, I want to ask you this question. When you were believing for me to be born again, it wasn't overnight. Right. And I was doing everything in the world not to be born again. I didn't care about nobody but myself, I guess you could say. How could you be steadfast and movable and abound in the work of the Lord? It's because you knew your labor was not in vain in God. That finishes out the verse there. Or was that you just started to get still and know yeah. that I am God? What happened? Well, I, that was my, yeah, I, I think that's true. I had to be still. Rest in the Lord, really, instead of struggling. Because that's what a lot of people do. They get anxious, they get fearful, and they get preoccupied with the problem rather than thinking about the answer. And that's what this verse in Psalms 46 is so powerful. In verse 10 in the Amplified, I looked it up, it says, And let be, let be, let be, and be still, and know, which, and in parentheses, it says, recognize and understand that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. So God is calling on us to be still and understand, recognize that he is God. Amen. And if we believe in him, we're going to see the answer to all the uh, yeah. things that we're praying about. I, I, I sought him and, and the, God would give me a peace. Amen. He truly would. And so there were times when you would manifest <laughs> and you would do things that look like the answer wasn't coming, but I had to focus on what the word of God Amen. said. You focused on the priority. You eliminated all the confusion. Yeah, and I love that verse. Be still and know that I am God. You it know says be anxious for nothing neither. And sin, yeah, and sin not. Yeah. It's the they see, so when I see all this stuff going on, how people just uh, 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 curse God and they're so godless. 
you know, and it, it hurts my feelings for God's sake, for the best, best way I could say it, you know. But I, he said he will be exalted amongst the heathen. Read that, 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 that verse again, and like it said. In said, the Amplified, be, yeah. let be and be still. Right. And know, recognize and understand that I am God. I will be exalted among That's the it. nations. So I all, will be exalted in the earth. All you that curse God and die, one day you're going to look in his face and you're going to wish to God you hadn't. Mm. Listen to me, sir. I don't believe that. It don't make no difference whether you do or don't. That's what you're believing and not believing is not going to change the destiny and destination of this planet. Yeah, we've read the end See, of the it's book. It's going to happen. Uh, we, God wins. We win because we're with God. Right. And so we don't have to be struggling. We don't have to be in fear or anxious. Even though you wrote that phrase, I don't know where that phrase came from, going to hell in a handbasket. Yeah. I can't, I'm trying to get a visual on what that would even mean. But And we see things every day in the news that makes us think. Well, you, I know, see you get mad. You talk to the television. You. I do. I, why do they do that? Why? I don't. I don't I said. I, I, and you know when they're interviewing somebody and they let them just spew and lie and then they go on to the next question. It's like they don't have a brain. And so I said, <laughs> why don't you just dif dispute that? That's not true. You know they're lying. But they move on to the next question. Yeah. I say, yeah, I do talk to the TV. Oh, yeah. yeah but at talk. least I don't Here's do it in the traffic yeah. like you do. I talk to the cars when I'm driving. And she said, they can't hear you. And Kathy talks to the TV. And I said, they can't hear you, you know, and everything. Just be still, Kathy. And no, I just tell you one thing. Some I it, am not watching this no more. She just get up know, and walk Sometimes it, it just, I give, make it a prayer point, make a, a faith Amen. project. And I speak to the, to the situation <laughs> and I pray. So yeah. I don't just look at it and go in fear. I get frustrated because I, I could tell it's a lie. I don't agree with what they're saying. Or I just flip it around and say, no, it's not that way. I'm not going to have it that way. What I hate is the immorality that I see in this generation. And what's worse is the violence that's in it. Yeah, and the kids are getting younger and younger in it. We, I think we saw a recent news thing about them. they called them the, the goons, I think, something Gilbert goons, goons yeah. or something. They kill that and boy. And they just killed. Oh, it's terrible. They just but you know the, it's you terrorizing know what, kids. You know what God said in Noah's generation? They have become violent, and he has to take them out. Now, you know, that generation didn't believe that neither. But it came to pass. Listen to me, you that are, you might turn, maybe you just by accident, you just got on this thing. Listen, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to make you afraid of nothing in any way, shape, because I, I don't ever bring fear or take fear to try to get people to an altar of God. Right. I think that's ridiculous, you see. What I do is I preach the love of God. But let me tell you, there is a judgment side to God. He and, is God. And he, there, he said, I will not always strive with a man. That's what he says. You know, now, I'm telling you, that day is coming when he will judge this. I love this phrase in this, in this verse. <coughs> it says, know that I am God. That's God's name. When, when am, Moses yeah. uh, w was with God in that, and God gave him the commission to go deliver his people, he says, well, what's your name? What am I going to tell these people that your name is? And he says, I am that I am. Yeah. And when you settle the fact that God is, is. the great I am, and he's the the authority, no matter what the situation is. So he says, be still and know that I am God. Well, you know, I see a lot of people, and we I, I, we need to notice the signs of the time. But I think sometimes we get too sign conscious. You see what I'm saying? When we ought to be word conscious, that's simple to say, occupied telecom. I mean, I don't deny that those things are happening. I just say, I know in whom I have believed and I'm persuaded. Amen. You know, and I don't doubt I, 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 that, that Abraham thought what he did. He said, should Eliezer be my seed since seeing I go child? Seeing I go child. And right. God said, you want to see something, Abraham? Mm -hmm. Took him outside and it was dark. Look at the stars. That's going to be your descendants. Mm -hmm. I was one of them stars. I'm the seed of Abraham. Think about that. So God was even thinking about me then, you know. Be still and know that I am God. You know, and... Um, one time I was praying for something, and I knew God had spoke to this person, but they wouldn't do it. They just wasn't doing it. And I, maybe I was in a hurry. And I said, God, why did you let me know that that was going to be the person that was going to do that? But they're not doing it. He said, Jesse, be still and watch that obedience come to pass. Well, it didn't happen right away, but it did, and God used that individual that he said. And after it was all said and done, I looked and thought, man, how much that person grew during that time. See, sometimes you just have to grow up to do some things you want to do or that God tells you to do. Right. And sometimes he may tell you a little earlier to prepare yourself for those things. But I'll tell you one thing, if you, it's better to obey than to sacrifice. 
And you know, I've said this so many times, we really know how to sacrifice. Boy, the church beat your brains out by sacrifice, 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 sacrifice. <laughs> and, and you know, but he said it's better to just obey. Most people's troubles come because people disobey. That is just simply the truth. Wars, rumors of wars, people are always mad about somebody. And it's usually someone who has enough power to change, quote, people's thinking. I call it, especially in the church, I call it Christian propaganda. Mm. You know, that, that uh, poverty is a blessing. That's a lie. Poverty is a curse. It's not in heaven, none whatsoever. Jesus was poor. When was he poor? Did you ever hear him say, I can't eat today because I don't have anything? Uh-uh. No, you know, but you know what? If you, if you move on people emotionally to give, and you do that a lot of times with poverty. And, but, you know, why don't you move on people to simply obey God's glorious word, that he will do what he says. And a lot of people raising money on people's emotions, so they don't get blessed. And he say, you see, that giving stuff doesn't work. Because you gave out of emotion instead of, and you know, and then your emotions changed. Oh, think about that for a minute. Uh, let me give you a prime example why I don't care what people think about me, about what I have. Mm. Now, look at me. Look at me. I am a very blessed man. Me and Kathy are very blessed. I'm spiritually, physically, and financially. I've had more people criticize me over that jet they still can't get over it. Criticize me over my house. They didn't pay for it. I paid for it. Do you understand what I say? All these different things. But let me tell you why. That's water on a duck's back to me. And I'm going to give you a scripture. And it's Psalms 49, verse 16. Be, thou, be, be not thou afraid when one is made rich. <laughs> When the glory of his house is increased. Read that and uh, get, pull that up in the Amplified. Verse 16 of Psalms chapter 49, if you can do that. Let me read it while she's getting it. Be not thou afraid. Be not thou afraid when one is made rich. When the glory of his house is increased. Read that. Well, it's uh, amplified, says it, be not afraid when an ungodly one mm -hmm. is made rich. That's true. When the wealth and glory of his house are increased and goes on, for when he dies, he will carry nothing away. Oh, yeah, and his I understand. glory will not descend See, see God him. don't care if someone's ungodly to be rich mm -hmm. or godly to be rich. It doesn't make any difference whatsoever at all. You see what I'm saying? So when people criticize me, I just say, well, I'm going to occupy till I come. One time I had someone come in my home, and we have a beautiful bedroom. It took me 10 years to find this bed that we sleep in. And yes, you know, I like antiques and different things. And it's a piece of artwork, what it is. They said, how do you sleep in that? I said, very well. <laughs> I just lay down, praise God, hallelujah. I'm not bragging about that. I, I slept on the floor, and Kathy sometimes catches me sleeping on the floor. I still like laying on the floor. I was raised sleeping on the floor. Me and my brother, me and Wayne. And, uh, and uh, you know, and it, it, it doesn't really bother me. So when God blesses me in the city, blesses me in the field, blesses me going in and blesses me going out, I don't say, oh, God, I hope nobody sees this. So I get persecuted. Yeah. So he talks about the ungodly there and the godly. It doesn't make any difference to God because, see, you don't take anything with you when you die. Amen. The only thing you actually take to heaven with you is what you give away. Which is, your, which is your heart. The Lord says, I, I, I want to bless you for what you did. Not only will he bless us in heaven, but he blesses us on the earth. Me and Kathy wanted to do something for a friend the other day. And uh, Kathy was talking about something. In, uh, and, uh, and I said, and both of us decided that we would give that person more money on something. They do good work. Now watch this. That was that morning. So we did. And of course, they called and was very thankful. But God already has supplied that, what we gave away, 12 hours earlier. I didn't know that. I knew it that afternoon. And that's, I believe, Isaiah 65, 24, I think. Before you ask or before you call, I will answer. God saw my heart and saw Kathy's heart that we wanted to be a blessing. 
Thank God we were able to be that blessing. You see what I'm saying? So there's a lot of times you say, but I, I, I want to give like that. Be still. Right. And know, not, uh, and know that I am God, because he will be exalted with the heathens. And I get very angry when people curse God and deny him and when uh, some of these people didn't do terrible things to uh, image of Christ in some of these festivals. You see now that kind of stuff. Now, if you was a Muslim and you pull that shenanigan in a Muslim community, they'll kill you, buddy. You don't see them doing that to Islam. You know why? Because then people will come up there and knock your brains out. You know why? Because you're going to respect Muhammad whether you believe in him or not, according to them people. But, you know, we heard this statement years ago that um, the Christians should turn the other cheek. And that's true. Don't misunderstand me. But that's when, you, that's when you're preaching the gospel, just to just say things. And I'll, I'll, I'm just going to be honest with you. I mean, I have been, I've been spit on, slapped, and everything when I've been preaching. But I'm not going to let somebody just come up to me and slap me. If I'm not preaching and somebody just won't slap me, uh, you, you better believe in healing because something's coming down. You understand what I'm saying? Don't let this small stature fool you. I get me a baseball bat if I got to. You know what I'm saying? I don't mean that pridefully, but I mean I I know what I can do with a baseball bat. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And I don't mean that pridefully, but I mean, but uh, if I'm preaching the gospel, that's a whole nother ball game. But I'm saying, but just to come slap somebody and hit somebody because they're a Christian. I mean, I got so angry one time. You might have seen it three or four years ago. They had an image of Jesus Christ and a a big bottle of urine. Did y'all see it? It was on television one time. It was in New York. And, you know, and, and, and it was just so insulting to the Christianity. And thank God Christianity, that somebody didn't knock the guy's brains out. But if you'd have done something, if you even draw an image of Muhammad, they consider that insulting and will hurt you. So you that really are against God and all that kind of stuff, go give that shot on the Islam side and see how long you're going to last. I'm not telling you to do it, but I'm just saying, listen to me. You don't play games. You see what I'm saying? Well, let me tell you something. God doesn't play games. He said, I will be exalted above the heathen. And they're going to, you're going to have, their teeth are going to gnash at each other in hell and all that kind of people. Say, I don't believe that. That don't make no difference. Yeah. That's coming yeah, to pass. Yeah, the time's running out. There's a you lease on the earth. Satan's right. in charge now, mm -hmm. but God has, is going to have the last say. And all these signs that we see in the heavens, as well as on the earthquakes, the tsunamis, all that kind of, this is all the beginning of sorrows. And you know what? I think what, what you're really dealing with today and where that's God put that upon your heart is because with all the trouble and the news reports that we hear on the word, on, in, out in the world, we have to center in on God. Remember, He is God. He's the great I am. So be still and be confident in what he has promised you. What did Jesus say to the wind and the storms when the disciples were in the boat and the waves and they said, Master, save us? He said, peace, be still. And it was. And, and it was. So the one word from God can change that whole situation. So getting in fear and anxiety is going to pull you away from peace. But sticking with the word of God and what he said is going to bring you right into the center of God's peace, which will help you to be still and know that He is God. Amen. And He can give A you the God. He can give you the word you need. He can give you the answer. He can bring you direction and wisdom. Uh, do you remember when we had our other building? This was in the '90s, and we 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 bought our first ministry yeah, headquarters. And um, I remember we had to we had to decorate it, knock some walls down, move some things around. And I remember painting it. And I remember looking for wallpaper borders. In those days, the border was mm -hmm. really big. You'd paint the room, then you could put a border on it to give it a little style, what the fashion was of that day. And I found this wallpaper border. I don't know if you remember, I thought it was a fun thing to, well, I loved it because it was scripture. And there was this one wallpaper book that I went through that actually had scripture uh, in there. So this one wallpaper border said, be still and know that I am God. That's right. You remember where I put it? In my office? I put it in the <laughs> ladies' room. And the and ladies. The ladies. <laughs> so, but it was beautiful. <laughs> and the colors were right because it had a little pink and green in it. But I remember, so that's a quiet place. A lot of people, that's the only place they're still. But regardless, be well, still. Well, I've learned something about women. When they got to go to the bathroom, get out the way. We're, I didn't ask for that. They get but out I'm the way, saying, son. Because good Lord, they're in trouble, so they got to go. <laughs> be still. There's, and the scriptures are so powerful. And so sometimes, no matter what that verse is, God will give you a verse that will strengthen you and empower you. I remember finding a verse <laughs> of scripture that I put in my, 
<laughs> I'm still laughing about that. Yeah, but you you forgot about that, huh? Uh, no, be I, still yeah, and know yeah, that yeah, I'm I, did, I didn't go in the women's bathroom. It may still be there. We sold that building. <laughs> I didn't go in the women's. I still don't. You know, we have some beautiful bathrooms here. The, even the girls say, man, it is nice. But I don't know what they look like. Well, I don't, you don't go in even, there. You don't, well, I think I probably showed it to you while I was building. You may well, you have probably showed me a pe- uh, some wallpaper or something like that. But, you know, I never actually seen it on but the wall. But this whole... I don't, I, I, I don't get turned on going in... To look at the bathrooms. You know? well, <laughs> I don't go, whoa, look at that toilet. Is that a fine toilet? You know, you know. I saw a picture of one the other day. It was amazing. <laughs> it's it was amazing. In a small, small laundry room, they had this, I don't know, it came in my feed. It was a laundry room, and the, the washing machine and dryer were up kind of high, not really high, but you pressed a button, and this cabinet that was below the washer dryer came out, and it was a toilet. <laughs> I thought that was amazing. Well, I didn't know how women are. They got to go. They got to go. It, you can always find room. Oh, when Kathy tells me, get out of the way. And it always hey, seems to happen quit. when we come driving and I, and I, I'm not opening up the door fast enough, get out of the way. Get out so I'm Whoa, telling, okay, okay, still, I got it. I got it. Be still and know you need to get out the way. <laughs> you got to get out But I was way. looking up the scriptures, too, while you were talking and a while ago. I was listening, but I was also looking. I'm glad you did that. Praise because the Lord. there's a verse in, in Exodus chapter 14. You might go want to go there. All right. Exodus uh, chapter 14. Exodus 14. This is 14. the story of... Uh, the children of Israel had just come out of Egypt, yeah. had been delivered miraculously by God, all mm-hmm. the different signs and things that had happened. Mm-hmm. And they, here they were, their backs were up against the Red Sea. Right. And the army of Egypt was coming at them on the other side. And Moses was going to God asking. Uh, and, and so Moses said in verse 13 to the people, and you've had a whole teaching on some yeah. of this stuff. But this is the phrase, and it's a great phrase. So, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he sh- will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. So this phrase about be being still. still, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, is a, is a powerful truth. And of course, in that day, we all know, because you taught on this, how... Uh-huh. Actually, Moses was kind of speaking in fear because God answered him, what are you talking to me for? Yeah. Tell the people to go forward. That's right. But regardless, this stillness, this peace that comes from saying what God tells you to say That's right. is powerful. It's, it's, it's very simple. I, you know, I, I do that constantly all the time in this ministry. You know, it just, just get still and know. You, know. you know how I get my sermons? I get still. That's right. All of a sudden, God, he'll touch me. And like when I go to write my pardon letter, are you that a pardon to my ministry? Thank you for doing that. Because that word, that pardon letter is a word to you from God right. and a word to me from God. It'll just touch me. And I know, I may not even have the subject. I may not know what to say. I immediately get up. You've seen me do it many times. Mm-hmm. Y'all excuse me, I got to go. And I go sit in my study or my office or whatever, and I just get still. Mm-hmm. And then, boy, the revelation begins to flow, and I start writing. And I'll show you what I do. Is It's so funny. See how, like, the Kathy... She, she, I guess she, she can't. She has to write notes down and things when we talking. I, well, I, I don't. I wanna, shoot from the hip. I don't want to She's Joe Biden you. and I'm Trump. But <laughs> don't you call me? You just. I knew. I knew that wouldn't get her. Now. I knew I, I wouldn't get her because you know she. You got to have a teleprompter. That's okay. That's well, because okay. you know it's hard to interrupt you. <laughs> oh, 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 now she's gonna. Because <laughs> you don't sometimes. Now you sound like me, Biden. You're trying lose, to crucify Trump. I don't want to <laughs> lose my thought. Will you quit telling me? <laughs> I know. I, I think she's you. a Republican, ladies and gentlemen. It just drives the nuts. I just thought of it. I'm not a Republican. Did you know that? You know, I, I, I'm an independent. You know, I just stay. You know, I, I go with the flow. I mean, I, I'm like a guy on a surfboard. Okay, let's ride this wave, baby, and get it over with. You know, because God will be exalted. He will be, and I not only believe that, I know that. Mm-hmm. And you know it too, Kathy. I, when Kathy makes her mind up about something, son, I mean, I, it's it. I mean, it's it's going to come to pass. Mm-hmm. You know, and I and I see it when it hits her, she just goes with it. See, it's the word though. Like when she's studying, oh Jesus, man, get out of the way. If you say something, excuse me, excuse me. I'm I'm reading the Bible here. Okay, I got it. So we've learned how to not say nothing to each other, especially in the morning on what we call devotion time. And I may be from here to the to to, to wait, I guess to the end of that table that you see on a, uh, on on your TV right there, but not a word is said. Then when it's finished, you know, that's it. You know, then we you, know, you talk. You know, you give you give people space. You know, and that's what God is saying. Be still and know that I am God. And you know, maybe just maybe, sometimes the reason why things take so long that we don't know He's God. That's good. Until we get still. 
Mm -hmm. So he just waits to see. No, do you understand recognize it? and recognize. Yes, Apple indeed. God told us. You know, is that uh, forty-six uh, verse? Is passion translation in uh, Psalms? Uh, yes. It's see what the passion. I just felt a little Lord speak. See what the passion Psalms, says about that. Psalms uh, forty-six. Forty-six verse uh, ten. Ten. Yeah. See what it says. Okay. I like that passion translation. It's, it. I even like the name of it, man. <laughs> What does it say? It says, surrender your anxiety. Oh, that's good. Be silent and stop your striving, and you will see that I am God. I am the God above all, na all the nations, and I will be exalted throughout the whole earth. Okay, so what it's saying is, read the first part. And then the, okay. Read the first surrender part. Surrender your anxiety. And the, and that's the, number and one. And the translation for that, it has like a little footnote next to anxiety. It says, relax. Okay. <laughs> Surrender your anxiety or relax. That's number one. What's the second statement? Um, be silent and stop your striving. Okay, that's, that be silent. is... Be silent or shut up. Stop, stop your, your striving. striving. So that's the second point right there. And then there. the next one says, you will see that I am God. Oh, now the manifestation of what process. being still is coming to pass. Hmm, well, I'm, I'm glad the Lord spoke that to me to go to the, the Passion Translate because it's so true. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is going to do what he said. So even though I don't like what's happening in the world, it doesn't make no difference what they say. Huh. Because the creator of all things is going to make that final decision. Yeah. And all we got to do is stand still and watch the salvation of the Lord. The message translation is interesting. You okay. want me to hear it? Yeah. You want to hear it? What does it say? Message translation of verse 10 says, step out of the traffic. <laughs> Take a long, loving look at me, your high God, above politics, above everything. Oh, boy, I mean, if it's not a political world today. <laughs> read that again. we got to say that one step more time. Step out of the traffic. Up. Step out of the traffic. Okay. Take a good, long, take a long, loving look at me, your high God, above politics, above everything. Isn't that great? <sighs> That's strong, man. That's just such I a blessing that. of the Lord. These you know, I'm, I'll tell you something. I think today you needed to hear this. Because some of you, you're wondering why. I think we're answering the question, why? Why hasn't happened yet? Well, maybe you hadn't been still enough. See what I'm saying? Mm. Step out the traffic. I like that. I you know, love that. And, and I love that passage. Three things mm -hmm. right there. There's three types of peace, and I'm going to close with this. Okay. The peace of God, the peace from God, and the peace with God. And Jesus gave us all three. He said, my peace I leave with you. Mm -hmm. Not as the world gives. Mm -mm. Right. Because God will do what he say, says all the time. Partners, thank you for allowing us to be able to do these boardroom chats with all these cameras and furniture. You've done all that. You know, 100% of what you give goes into world evangelism. This whole complete edifice was built because of your faithful financial support to this ministry. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you. In this particular studio here, where we're looking at, it cost a million, a little over a million dollars to do this studio here. That's just and, the interior because the structure just, was already here. Yeah, it the was structure was already here. Garage. All these lights and things. And we had a million dollar For giver. A truck, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just such a, plus other people gave to it. And we spent it all. I mean, because these cameras cost a fortune. Lights cost a fortune. All this kind of thing. Everything in here is, 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 is costs money. Costs money. I mean, you know. It's priceless, is in a sense, because we're able to come to you. Mm. I want to thank each and every one of you for being so courteous and kind to think of us the way you do financially every month. And I mean that sincerely. Let me say it again. 100% goes in the world evangelism. Me and Catherine don't get any of this. None whatsoever at all. We're already taken care of. If you'd like to be a partner, I wish you would become one. I say it all the time. You give me $1,000, I'll get 1,000 people born again in a week's time. We do it through social media. We do it through broadcast television. It's amazing what's happening. I just read one of those testimonies yeah, about I mean, somebody getting saved this week. I'm telling you. Or it last week. It happens all the time. Thanks for If you'd that. like to give, you can go to JDM.org. That is a website, and you can hit a donate button, give that way if you like. You want to use pay PayPal, you can use that if you so like. Or you can text to give a one-time donation or a recurring one if you want. Or you can use the JDM apps. The Catholic likes the JDM app because there's so many different things. That, and select the giving you want. Or you can just mail in an old-fashioned check to the ministry, and it will go 100% in the world evangelism. I hope you do so. I hope you join us in our wonderful vision of reaching people, changing lives one soul at a time. Mm -hmm. So I don't have much. It don't take much. The amount of people watching my broadcast television, and, you know, we've had over 68 million people 
from January 2020 to the end of March of 2024, over 68 million have contacted us on this uh, on social media through views, through uh, I don't know everything you could think of. Just did it. Mm-hmm. Think if each one of them gave a dollar. That's 60, over 68 million dollars. Okay, 50 cents. Cut that in half. You get you good at math? Figure that out. 68. Cut it in half. Would it be 34? Yeah. Okay, a quarter. 25 cents. You see when everybody does something? That's what it's all about. So thank you for being so courteous and kind. And I'm going to leave you with this statement. Be still and know that I am God. He is your God, and he will do what he says. Jesse and Kathy saying, see you next week. Bye-bye. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.